Hello guys, so welcome. Uh, in this video, as you know, we will talk about what I learned today, and I translated the news, and we I keep going to translate this. Why the criticism seems more effective than praise, and we translated from here to end of this part and I will tell something about you and at final we found the result the result is for example uh, your performance is worse than your average uh, for example today there was a competition and your performance is worse than average and next time your performance will be increased naturally that's naturally is the important word here and if your performance is uh, better than average for now so the next time your performance most likely worse than now uh, because uh, we know the performance uh, very around uh, your main your average level so actually here the news the writer uh, support this idea price uh, praise and criticize is not that much important for example today your performance is not very good so i am your coach and I will criticize you, right? And I will find your faults and shortcomings, and and then I will see uh, your performance will increase. You will be better in next competition. So I conclude uh, this result: your performance increased because of my criticize. But actually. Uh, even if uh, I didn't say anything, I didn't criticize you, your performance most likely will be increased because it's degree, uh, degress, regress this word, this, it's a verb, regress your average. So that's important. Uh, in the same uh, uh, way, if you are, if you're good, doing good uh, in this competition your performance is good so i will praise you right and you i said you are good and something like that and next in next competition your performance most likely will be worse than this time so at that time i can let this result and i will be convinced uh, that with that your performance decrease uh, uh, getting worse because of my praise Be I told I will think I praise you and I said good things to you and you became relaxed and stop improving yourself and your performance is uh, getting worse but it's not totally correct uh, this news talking about like that and talking about it uh, that's the important uh, that's all for today and now let's go to talk about TED talks okay today uh, we translated this part from this audience the title of the TED talks is how the how the food you eat affects your gut Cut is so important here. So the result, and finally we uh, learned if you eat mm, the food that doesn't have fiber that much, uh, your it means uh, your the bacteria in your gut doesn't have the fill, and they are starving them until they die off. That's important. So the result is the less diversity diversity is there there won't 
be a lot of kind of bacteria in your gut. That's really a bad thing. So because we talked about the vitreates, vitreates uh, is protect uh, you from uh, flammation. Yeah, we, we learned that word actually. Flammation. If you watch that video, you already learned that. It means uh, interplama. So that's uh, the important uh, matter for us. So we know specific foods affect your bacteria. So we find this result. And it one the recent microbiome study. Scientists find that that's really important. If you e eat fruits, vegetables, tea, drink tea, coffee, red wine, dark chocolates. If you eat these things, your bacterial diversity will increase. So in your gut, there are a lot of a lot of uh, kind a lot of kind of bacteria will be in your gut. So that's really good thing. But if you eat the foods high in dairy fat, like whole milk or sugar sweetened sodas, actually this is my this was my favorite when I was in uh, Turkey. If you drink whole milk and sugar sweetened sodas, that's decrease uh, your bacteria diversity. So it means you don't have mm, that much kind of uh, bacteria in your gut. So mm, this is also important. How what food is prepared also matter. So minimally processed. Processed means, for example, you here there is coffee, right? Uh, where, 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 here coffee if you buy uh, the seed of coffee and if you buy mission to your house and you make the coffee by yourself and drink that that's so beneficial but if you drink like Nescafe that they are uh, much processed they are much processed not minimally so they are not beneficial so we need to eat minim uh, minimally processed fresh foods have generally more fiber fiber is so important and provide better fuel so fiber is bacteria's fuel we say that so there are uh, here he said what kind of foods we eat like the steamed uh, steam means the vapor um, when you boil the water, you will see some kind of vapor. If you cook uh, the food with that vapor, that like we said, it's steamed and salted. Uh, salted means saute, saute lamish, and raw means uh, like you drop, you pick up some vegetables. They are fresh. They are not cooked. Uh, vegetables are actually usually more beneficial than fried dishes so you try not to eat mm. fried dishes especially don't cook vegetables too much that's the important because if you cook them so much they don't have uh, that fiber they lose their fibers and there are also other ways preparing foods can Introduce burda uh, here. Oh, sorry, I said burda. Introduce means we usually use. Uh, for example, I have a friend and you have friends, and uh, we in I introduce my friend to your friend or to you. But here, introduce means and stick in means enter. If you want to uh, take good bacteria in your gut. Uh, you should preparing this food something you need to eat steamed salted raw vegetables they are really good and 
he said there are also different ways to prepare it. For example, ferment, uh, fermented. Fermented means mild. Fermented foods are so uh, has so uh, beneficial uh, actually probiotic bacteria. It means team means here full, full with helpful probiotic bacteria like lactobacillus and bifidobacteria. These are so beneficial bacteria for us, for our gut. So you can eat fermented foods, steamed, sauteed, raw vegetables. They are so important. And fruits, vegetables, tea, coffee, red wine, dark chocolate. These are the beneficial foods for your health and for your gut. That's all. Now let's go to talk about Hobbit books. Now here uh, we start from here. At last, yesterday we finished. Bilbo went to uh, cellar to f to take beer and went to pantry to take uh, seed cakes. And when he come back, Balin and the uh, dwarves, they are dwarves. They was talking like old friends because they are, they were brothers. So of course they know each other very well. We learned that. And we were pumped down. Pumped down means, for example, uh, when you are hurry, you wanna put some glass on the table. If you uh, if you are in hurry, you directly put put it hardly. Pump down means uh, this. Pump down the beer cake in front of them because there was a ring uh, at the bell again. So this time uh, Bilbo thought Gandalf certainly it must be Gandalf because he is still waiting for Gandalf and he thought as uh, puffed here puffed means He's doing this and thinking Gandalf for certain this time, like this. And unfortunately, it was not Gandalf. Actually, it was two more dwarves, not one. And they are with blue hoods and silver belts and yellow beards. Their beards yellow. And Balin's uh, beard is that was white, right? And each of them carrying a bag with tools, tools of uh, bag of tools, and spade. Spade means uh, if you live in a village, you usually use that to take the soil. It means crack. And if they uh, in the hopped, uh, it means they enter directly as soon as the door began to open. So we uh, saw this kind of sentence before, and but this time Bilbo wasn't surprised that much because he get used to uh, two dwarves come inside like this. They they hopped inside, so Bilbo get used to. So he didn't surprised, and he said, "What can I do for you?" to these two dwarves and one of them was Kelly. Kelly said collect your servers and we also get used to this kind of sentence too and the other is Philly Kelly Philly and they swept off the blue hoods they take off I, I translated like this and they both both means uh, belt something like that and it's they show their respect to uh, Bilbo and Bilbo said at yours and your families and uh, he shows respect to them and their family but the uh, previous page he didn't say it like this so that was kind of rude but now he remember his manners manners means here uh, görgü, görgü kurallara so he said the a kind things, kindly answered their their 
Maybe, how can we say their introductions, something like that. And the Wallin and Balin here already say clearly said the Wallin and Balin was uh, at the table there was eating something, and he said already they're here. And let us join Trong. Trong means the crowded uh, some area. There are a lot of people. So let us join the throng. Throng means here Kalabalık. Hadi Kalabalık katılalım, he said. And throng taught Mr. Buggins. So when uh, Buggins taught and think uh, here throng, he didn't doesn't like it. So he, he, it means there will be a lot of people coming here. So the peop, uh, the house will be more crowded. So Bilbo doesn't like it. I really must sit down for a minute and collect my wits. Here, this is a really interesting. Wits means, for example, I am so tired, and because there there are a lot of things I need to think. So I I ask for a minute. Okay, leave me alone. Give me one minute. I need to. Renew my m mind, something like that. Collect my wit means ak aklını toplamak in Turkish. That's really a good structure you can use in your daily speech. I will use it. I will use it. Collect my wits, and I need to drink something. So we stopped here because the other uh, sentence is a little longer. Uh, then, so tomorrow I will translate this sentence. I hope this video help you to maybe you're listening, and especially I want you, I want this video make you motivate because I'm always doing this, and I am always telling you what I learned today. So I hope this video make you think, makes you think. Did I learn today something? So you also start to learn something every day. See you. Bye bye.